Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Berean Baptist Church on this Wednesday evening. It's good to see you all here. Um, we're going to open up with a song tonight, number 283. 283, Joy Unspeakable. Let's all stand, please, if you could. I have found His grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. It is joy unspeakable, and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable, and full of glory. Oh, the app has never yet been told. I have found the pleasure I once craved. From the awful gulf of sin, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. All the half has never yet been told. I have found living in the realm of grace. Savior's presence is so near, I can see his smiling face. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, and the half has never yet been told. I have found the hope. Waves and glory roll. It is like a great overflowing well springing up within my soul. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. Oh, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Half has never yet been told. Amen. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Bob Johnson if you would open in prayer, please, sir. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, let's turn to 337. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. 337. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey not a shadow can rise not a cloud in the skies but a smile quick drives it away not a doubt or a fear not a sign or a tear can abide while we trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a crown or a cross, but his blessed life we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way but to trust and obey. 
delights of his love until all on the altar we Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, he will sit at our feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we Trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen. Okay. <laughs> All right, we've got uh, lots of things going on this uh next week coming up and uh, so uh, let's be in our places uh, I guess we're having all church uh, visitation on uh, Saturday so uh, uh, let's be there and, and let's uh, uh, go out and knock on doors and, and give people the gospel um, we don't get a chance nowadays to talk a uh, long time with people, but some people we, uh, we meet and we have good visits, so it's a, it's a good time to uh, uh, go and, and, and uh, talk to people about the Lord, um, and uh, we've had, you know, if we get one person, you know, one person a year, one person whatever, it's worth it, it's all worth it, plus we never know we never know when that track is going to make a difference in someone's door. And uh, um, Brother Vic is, a, is, a, is an example of that. Uh, he uh, got a track in the door and he came. And uh, he was already saved, but he got baptized here. And uh, so we're thankful for that. Um, okay, so... And then on, on Sunday, we're going to have uh, Brother Tom Gonderman is going to be here, a uh, missionary to Australia, and he's going to be, he's our preacher of the month. And uh, he will be teaching the teens in Sunday school and, and preaching in the morning service. And then uh, in the evening service, we're going to have the Lord's table. And so uh, we look forward to that. Um, let's see, uh, a little, 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 a missions conference, the 20th through the 23rd, that'll be coming up, and, uh, uh, we've got some, uh, speakers we're looking forward to, um, Tony Bawawa, uh, BMIA Far North keynote speaker, he's going to be, uh, of course he, Canada, Greenland, I don't know about Iceland and all that, but anyways, he's, he's going to be uh, here. Uh, looking forward to see Jeff again, Jeff Klein, and uh, he's uh, our missionary over in North Powder. And then uh, Gary Matheny, Gary Matheny has, uh, uh, I don't know if you say retired off the mission field, but his mission com is complete. When he got off with uh, COVID, uh, came, came here and he couldn't go back um, to Romania, um, he, he found out that they were just carrying on and, and doing what they always did. And he planted some churches and they were doing well. And, and so, um, I don't know, he's, uh, he's probably about five years younger than me. Something like that? I don't know. But anyways, uh, he's going to be here, and I'm anxious to hear what he's doing now. 
Uh, he's, he wrote some books and stuff, and so, or at least one book, and, and uh, um, so we'll, we'll hear what he's, uh, I, I'm sure he's busy. I mean, I don't, I can't see him not being busy. And uh, so anyways, he's going to be here as well. And uh, Touch Keo, haven't seen him in a long time. And he's going to be here from Cambodia. So that should be a good conference. And we've got the, uh, if you have change that you want to put in, in here, if it's weighing down your pocket so much and you need to get rid of it, well, there it is, okay. And you can do that anytime tonight. Um, and let's see, Pastor um, Jim, you've uh, checked in with uh, the conference down there. I don't, I haven't seen it, but uh, I guess things are going well. They got a big crowd, I understand, right? And uh, so, uh, be in prayer for Pastor and his travels and so forth. Uh, back, back to us here. Uh, I miss our pastor. I really do. Um, you know, he needs to be here. <laughs> but anyways, uh, we just, uh, what? Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's right. Sunday. Remember. Time change. Move your clock ahead. Ahead. So uh, go to bed an hour earlier or whatever you need to do. Be tired and fall asleep in church? No, 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 no. But anyways, uh, remember to move your clocks ahead because uh, you'll be all messed up if you don't <laughs> uh, getting here. So anyways, all right. Um, anything else? Oh, yeah, we do have visitation Saturday, so, yeah, all church visitation. I mentioned that. We need to, we need to be here uh, for that. In the end of the month, we're going to have a um, uh, church work day, right? And so that's another thing we have to keep in mind. So, okay, one more song, and then we'll get our speaker up here. We're looking forward to Brother Glenn speaking for us, and then we'll look forward to prayer. Okay, let's turn to uh, number 316. 316, satisfied. Satisfied with our salvation. All my life long I had panted for a drink from some cool spring that I hoped would quench the burning of the thirst I felt within. Hallelujah, I have found him whom my soul so long has craved. Jesus satisfies my longings through his blood I now am saved. Leaning on the hooks around me Till my strength was almost gone Longed my soul for something better Only still so hunger on Hallelujah, I have found it Who my soul so long has craved Jesus satisfies my longings Through his blood I now am saved For I was a Sought for riches, something that would satisfy. But the dust I gathered round me only mocked my souls and cried. Hallelujah, I have found him whom my soul so long has craved. Jesus satisfies my longings, in his blood I now am saved. Water ever spring, bread of life so rich and free, untold wealth that never faileth, my Redeemer is to me. Hallelujah, I have found him, whom my soul so long has prayed. Jesus satisfies my longings, through his blood I now. Amen. Okay.
Okay. All right. Brother Glenn is going to speak to us. And uh, I said, where, where are your props? And he said, oh, they're out there somewhere. Somewhere around. <laughs> so, brother. I will fetch. Please turn in your Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Brother Jim is already excited. All right. I thank Brother David for coming and helping and getting things set up for me and running things that I am currently unable to mess with at the moment. So, uh, anyway, <clears throat> say nothing. I gave this message uh, considerable thought when the Lord gave it to me, and it was going to be my five-minute message for the guys night. And then Pastor said, oh, no, you're going to do an evening service. And then we had a winter event that did not allow me to continue, and uh, I promptly got sick after that. And anyway, um, uh, can you open your eyes up? Yes, you may. You may open your eyes up. Um, anyway, some of you may recognize some of these items. No? Brother Jim does not recognize it. I needed the toilet brush, and I couldn't find it. There is a toilet brush. There, there is in the bathroom. I wasn't going to get a live one. No, no, I know better than that. Okay. You know what the message is going to be on, Brother Mick? I can't ask Ben. He's not here. You have no idea. Okay. All right. <clears throat> the title is Garbage and Trash. That's the title. Garbage and Trash. Why, you ask, my wife is shaking her head. No. No. <clears throat> Garbage and Trash. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 24, there is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw, that it was from the hand of God. Ecclesiastes 3.22, Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? And then Ecclesiastes 5.12 the sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. And then Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Behold, that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God giveth him, for it is, it is his portion. Every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth, and hath given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. And then Ecclesiastes 9, 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Ronald Reed, age 92, passed away in June of 2014. He left a fortune of $8 million to his family, plus $2.6 million to the Battleboro Union High School, where he worked as a janitor all his working life. No job, pardon me, no job is too small. No job 
is worthless. No job anywhere is not important. God designed each one of us to be able to work and to labor, to do something for his glory and also to live our lives with. And when you deviate from that, you become one of the homeless people out here. You live in the ditch. Uh, my next item is play, play, play. I was a janitor, a school bus driver, which still am, and a farmer. I learned how to clean toilets. I learned how to work one of these wonderful pieces of very delicate, very technical pieces of equipment. I learned how to strip and repair vacuum cleaners and to use them. When I would walk, in, as a result, it corrupted my eyeball. So when I walk into some place, first thing I do is I go, hmm, hmm, hmm. And I, when I go in the bathrooms, I have too much familiarity. I have too much, you know, and I have to resist the temptation to judge. So when my kids were old enough and I was cleaning in the high school in Pilot Rock, did I mention Pilot Rock? Pilot Rock, okay. They learned how to, well, pick up trash, clean, mop, et cetera, et cetera. And I told them, I says, when you get your first job, the first thing they're going to, except for roofing, that doesn't matter. The first thing they're going to hand you is the toilet cleaning kit. And Aaron, my second oldest son, did not believe me. And he signed on for a new restaurant in town called Jack in the Box. And the first thing his boss did was hand him the toilet cleaning kit. He's running the restaurants now, so I guess he learned how to do it properly. But anyway, America, the testimony of America's greatness has been its desire to work of the people in our country, to work, to do the best job we can. But now, today, it's play, 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 play. play. Look, smiles. See? Smiles. Yeah, smile, smile, smile. Play. Smartphones, smart watches, the TV screen, the, the computer games, computer games, the internet. And so as a result, work, how many of you, speaking to the adults, had chores when you were growing up? Raise your hand. Okay. Children, those of you under the age of 25, <laughs> uh, uh, how many of you have chores? I mean, how many of you have chores? Come on, finger, hand, hands high. Come on, hands high. Parents, you do a great disservice to your child if you don't have them do chores. Okay, we'll get off that hobby horse. I got paid for my, for my chore. Mom had a list, and I had to cook dinner my choice of dinner. I excelled at pizza and spaghetti. We didn't have a microwave. Hey, that would have been a godsend for me right there. But I had to set the table, wash the dishes, clean all the counters, clean up afterwards, and for my efforts, I got paid a dime. A dime. It took three years to earn $20. Working that 
okay? And there were other chores besides that, but she didn't trust us anywhere around the bathroom, but hey. Nor I shocked so many kids at Pilot Rock High School that said, oh, you're gonna do, you're gonna do, no, no, no. I says, I make more money than the manager at the gas station per hour in Pilot Rock by me mopping the floor of your mess that you left on the bathroom floor. I says, don't discount the janitor. First of all, he carries a deadly weapon. You never know where this has been, okay? Don't discount the janitor. This guy amassed $8 million. He didn't just play with his money. He saved some money all his working life, but he was just a janitor. What about the garbage man? Garbage men in the Seattle area earn $62,000 a year picking up your trash. And I don't know what their benefit package is. In 2 Thessalonians 3.10, for even when we were, with, we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Children, kids, young adults, if you're not going to work, mom and dad don't have to feed you. That bag of potato chips, <laughs> take it away. 1 Timothy 5.8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse, worse than an infidel. You need to work. You need to labor. By the sweat of your brow, you need to work. What is the physical manifestation of your time? Jim, what is, what is that physical manifestation of your time? Is your name Jim? Is your name Jim Guru? Hand me your wallet. Your wallet. Please, your wallet. Wallet? wallet? You have a wallet? A phone? Is your... Okay. Wow, that's... That's very... Wow. You, yeah, you, you're not just a teenager. They lose their phone, their life is over with. You lose everything. The physical result of your time is your paycheck. Money that you use to live on. That is interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm speechless now. <laughs> okay. You ever seen a Baptist heartbeat? Wherever that wallet's at, that's their heartbeat. That's from Sherry's pastor. The word work in the Bible is found 380 times in both the Old and New Testament. The word slothful is found 18 times. In Proverbs 6, verses 6 through 11, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When, thou, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. In Proverbs 13, 4, The soul of the sluggard desireth, and hath nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. In Proverbs 21, 25, the desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. I had a problem. We pulled into uh, the Walmart there at Troutdale with my school bus. I had a whole bunch of fifth graders on board, and they needed to pick up some stuff. Now, I'd gone there many times with my family, but as we pulled in, here was a wall surrounding the parking lot. And I pulled in my bus, and I looked, and it was all derelict campers and trailers and tents and bonfires in the Walmart parking lot. 
And I'm going, well, what is this? And I noticed as you passed into the parking lot, there was a crowd of 20 or 30 homeless that followed the cars as they went in. And then they would ask them for money. As a car, a bunch of people would follow that car over there. I made a big U-turn mm -hmm. with my school bus. I said, you get too close to the school bus, you're going to get run over. <laughs> I went across four lanes of active traffic, and we ate at a restaurant over there. It was Jack in the Box. Uh -uh. But they don't want to work. If you want to live that way, it's called living in a ditch. Don't be like that. God himself worked. In Genesis 2, 2, and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. What did he make? All of creation that we see today. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. There's a rest. God provides a rest for us. John 9, 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Right now in, in uh, the Ukraine, no one's really working. They're fighting to stay alive. You must work. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficient, sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God expects us to work, and he's provided for us to be able to work. In Hebrews 13, verses 20 through 21, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God remembers our work. In Hebrews 6.10, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed towards his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. In Colossians 3, verses 22 through 24, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that the Lord of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. I told the children downstairs, about the time it was time for the baptism, the Lord said, they need to know to work. Now these are just little kids. What can they do? I says, you could clean your room. Torture, 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 torture. You could clean, you could, you could, Say, Mom, Dad, no, no, they, they don't get this. No, 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 too technical. They could vacuum. Vacuum up the cat, the dog, brother, sister. Okay? They might be able to clean a mirror. My, one of my chores was to take out the slop out of the kitchen sink. You know what the slop in the kitchen sink is? Every greasy, grimy, gopher gut yeah, that grand mom could put in that sink, got put in that little basket, and I had to haul it out once a week. I did not like greasy, grimy gopher guts under my fingernails. Okay? Diesel oil, dirt, you know, that sort of stuff is okay. It's got a flavor to it. But that stuff was just nasty. Okay? And I had to go out back with that basket and scrape the grease. The, you ladies know what comes in a sink, right? Okay? Clean it all out and bring it back in the house. And then I scrub that stuff off. And it's not water soluble. 
doesn't come off really good. They could dust. You could dust. You could pick up your stinky sneakers and your shoes and your underclothes and put them away. <coughs> Quiet. Be quiet. Shh. No. Yes, I have the microphone. You don't. Okay. Baptist ants. I think I've told this once. Baptist ants. My pastor in Germany was with somebody, and he noticed this trail of ants running through his ha uh, in the kitchen. And he followed that trail of ants. Have you ever followed a trail of ants? This last year, we followed trails of ants all around our house. And he followed that ant, the trail of ants all the way down across the counters, across the stove, over by the refrigerator, down and around, and come up over by the sink. And here they ended up at a dead bug. And he got down there, he's really, he needed really big bifocals, and he had a magnifying glass. And he zoomed in, and his wife caught him. What are you doing at my sink? Well, I'm looking at these ants. And she got all upset. There's ants in her house. And he says, I'm amazed. You know, there's like a dozen of those ants picking up this dead bug, and they're going to pack that thing all the way around and over and over and over here and out. And he says, but there's four or five ants standing on top of that bug doing a jig and a dance. Them's Baptist ants. Because they're not doing nothing. They're just standing there just praising the Lord, but they're not doing any work. Don't be a Baptist ant. You can work. You can do something. Albert Hubbard said, the best preparation for good work tomorrow is to do good work today. Henry Ford said, quality means doing it right when no one is looking at you. No shortcuts. Dr. Bob, how many shortcuts can you do in the medical field? <laughs> Besides the little, little incision that's short, small. Nothing? In aircraft maintenance, Dave, when you assemble that jetliner landing gear, how many shortcuts can you take? None? Well, no one will know that the landing gear doesn't go up or down. Abraham Lincoln said, the best way to predict the future is to create it through work. Colin Powell, there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from your failure. Tim Ferriss, focus on being productive instead of just busy. Work harder than you think you did yesterday. <laughs> I put this in here. Indira Gandhi. My grandfather once told me that there were two kinds of people in the world. Those who do the work and those who take the credit. He told me to try and be in the first group. There was much less competition there. Work so hard that one day your signature will be called an autograph. Uh, and I can't pronounce this guy's name. Without labor, nothing prospers. The harder you work for something, the greater you will feel when you achieve it. When a, when a teenager graduates high school, and grandma and grandpa bought them that brand new car. Not happening. <laughs> no, no, not happening. No, no, no. We made you pay for your car. Guess what? I see it all the time driving my bus up at the high school. They got that brand new car. And they drive it like it's going to be trash within a week. 
and I will usually find it down on my county road at that blind man corner down there. <laughs> There's some fresh tracks leading straight to that tree this morning. There's no pieces of plastic I see, but somebody kissed something because the mail lady saw them. She says, they weren't getting out of it. <laughs> Don't just give stuff away. If they work for it, they work for their education, they work for their job, they will earn the money to buy their thing, and they will have it, and they will treat it with respect. And it will last. When you give a kid a toy, the kid just runs that toy until the wheels fall off, and then it's trash within a week. But if they had to work for that money to go buy that toy, they will prize that toy. That toy will be on a special pedestal. They will take care of that toy. They'll have respect for that toy because they worked for it. When you work on your relationship, you get the prize. But if you forget the relationship and you don't work on the relationship, what happens? She ice picks you in the middle of the night. <laughs> that, was, that was from Sherry's preacher again, but <clears throat> all the ladies laughed then too. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Theodore Roosevelt said, Far and away the best prize that life offers is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. If you could kick the person in the pants responsible for most of your trouble you wouldn't be sitting for a month because you wouldn't work. Um, Vidal Sassoon, don't know who, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. It comes nowhere else. It's a fantasy. So when you get your first job, your first job, It might be, it might be, you know. That's why you're working at McDonald's. But what would happen at McDonald's? They're not going to let you cook food right away, especially not my chicken McNuggets. They're going to make you clean the windows and the door. I go up to Jack in the Box when Aaron's first started working, and I didn't grab the handle. I touched the glass. And left fingerprints and said, Aaron, there's some fingerprints on the door. <laughs> and don't be afraid, children, of your first job. It may last you the rest of your life if you do it well. The Lord can give you joy in your work, no matter what, no matter where. I was always afraid. When I joined the Air Force, Lord, is this going to be a job that I really, because I just signed up on the dotted line and wherever and whoever they were going to send me to, who knows? Luckily, they sent me to Germany. And they put me in packing and trading, transportation. What do you do? You put stuff in a box. You take it, you put it in a box, and you make sure it don't break when it gets shipped overseas. How boring. I, no, I wasn't dying. And then they called me up because an airplane crashed. And they needed someone to go out and pick it up. The pilot survived. But it was a near thing. And I picked up that plane. And I put it in boxes. And some of those boxes were way smaller than this. And I felt good that I had accomplished a job. And I cleaned up that farmer's field and his trees and stuff. And he came and thanked us for doing the job well. I had a team. I had a whole bunch of pe people do it. Because that aircraft came down at a 45 degree angle, hit a bunch of trees, bounced into the ground that 30 feet down, and then exploded over a hillside. An F-4 Phantom aircraft carries over 500 gallons of jet fuel. And it fireballed and blew itself up the mountainside. 
little tiny pieces. We got down on our knees and we crawled through the grass and we picked up every one of those little pieces. I hurt for a month, but it was a good job. And I found joy in doing on my knees, picking up little pieces, and I had joy. And there were some exciting times, which I want to tell you about because it involved fire and water, but, <clears throat> but the Lord can give you joy in whatever work he wants you to do, wherever it may be. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, I pray you'd bless your word, Father. Our natural state is to be lazy, Father, and I can feel it in my bones when I don't want to work. But Lord, I pray you'd give grace and you'd give help, Lord, for your saints, that they'd work and continue working for thee and give you glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, let's turn to number 39. I just wanted to say that, um, you know, I appreciate my dad uh, giving me work to do. He went off to work. I was home in the summer. Uh, my brother was five and a half years older than me, so he went a lot of times with him, and uh, he left me work to do. And, uh, uh, and then I remember being in the uh, chicken house. Uh, we had a couple thousand chickens besides the market garden farm. And uh, um, they used to roost on this platform with rails on it. And stuff used to go through that onto the, into the pit, what we called the pit. It was probably 95, 98%, you know what. And we would go in there and we'd have to shovel it out into the truck, bring it out into the field. And, uh, you know, I remember doing that. I remember cleaning out chicken coop when it was probably 15 degrees Fahrenheit and the wind was blowing. And I was cold shoveling that out of the truck onto the field. But I appreciate learning how to work. I mean, that is, that is something that's very important for, for kids. And I don't know what they're getting today. Like Brother Glenn was saying, you know, we have the, the, uh, the telephones and whatnot, and they're looking at that, and, you know, nothing to do, I guess. I don't know. And it's a shame. But anyways, I uh, appreciate that, Brother Glenn. Let's turn to number 39. Son, uh, take my life and let it be. Let's stand if you can, please. And Jim's going to come in a few minutes and take your court request. Take my life and let it be Take my love. 